have control of this dog? <laughs> Not today I don't. This dog right here needs that head straight, head straight, because it has no respect for anybody whatsoever. You have no control over this dog right now. But that's okay. Oh, but that's why I'm here. <laughs> Don't let that happen. This is my show dog. That's the one I want to take into the ring right there. I don't want to take the one that just stands there perfect. I want that attitude in that ring. Okay? Do I want to take the attitude out of the dog? No. Do I want the dog to respect me as the handler? Absolutely. So that's the difference there. Okay? Okay, so I put the chain on like this yep. and pull forward. So it's high up on the back of the head and forward like this. Yep. I take these two fingers right there by where the hole is and I lock the pinky in. Yep. So these two fingers lock the pinky in. Yep. Turn it so my, my thumb and forefinger make a saddle. Tell the dog to stand and I say head straight, head straight. And that puts all the pressure here, none on the neck. And look at how much better he's already. Okay, so how do you feel about that? Feel good about it. Feel um, good? Look at his front feet. He looks like a rocket. He does. <laughs> and, and that is all because you don't have control of this head. Still? Yeah, he's oh. still fighting you. See, see, his body is going this direction. His head's going this direction, which is making his feet go like that in that front. So until you get full control of that, of that head, he's always going to fight you. And he's doing this on purpose. Okay. He's, see, it's going out. If I was to put a string through his nose and come out the rear, that string would be going this way and then make a turn that way. Yeah. It needs to be perfectly straight. What he's doing is he's saying, I'm going to do this the way I want to do it. So he'll either move his head up and down mm -hmm. or side to side. Yes, I'm telling all your secrets so, right there. I try to pay attention, you know, I try to see that. But okay. Apparently not. So, so here, we're putting this pressure here, mm -hmm. thumb and forefinger out further towards the end of that muzzle. Okay. Not so much here, because you don't have control there. Uh uh. Okay, so out here you have better control. Mm -hmm. Here, he can still do whatever he wants to do. So you want this out here so you can go head straight. You're going to go head straight, head straight, and that's going to put that pressure here. You can also come in here to help out with that from this point or put your hand there, head okay. straight. Don't you have, you want to have a little tantrum? Oh, that's good, yes. Okay, so go ahead and try that with your hand position out towards the end of the muzzle a little more. Okay, and this needs to be loose. And you can use this hand to come from behind the head or towards at, um, by the front of the loin Stay. before it gets to the loin and act like you're the alpha, say, knock it off. So put your hand back there, too. Uh -uh. Stay. Because like an alpha would come over and say, Stay. knock it off, and they'd put their teeth right on the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, get the head straight. Good. Okay, that's better. Okay. So that really is my one of my questions I did have with you is, for you is that for these judge exams, hey, stay. I'm having a hard time getting a good system. I'm not sure. Hey, stay. Um, sometimes I'll do like a free stack in the front. I'll like walk him into it. I'll stand him and then I'll adjust the back end. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because I feel like when I do these walk-in stands, mm -hmm. hey. They're not consistently as good as when right. he can just stand himself. We'll, we'll do a, uh, okay, I'll teach you a, a little exercise called push-pull, but he's not ready for that yet. Okay. He's still got this going between his ears that we got to work on. See, when you, if you do this, like this would be week number two. Okay. And on week number two, all you would do is, <laughs> see, that's a just, tantrum right there. Wait. I guess. <laughs> yeah, you just Whatever. wait that out. Let him have a tantrum. He is giving you the stink eye big time right there. Totally and <laughs> and so you've been actually doing this with him for a year or yeah. about a year now. Okay, so a year and he's still doing this, good. which that was good. good. You let him have that, and then when he relaxed, 
you praised him, which was perfect for that. Now, this goes to show you that if you have a, a dog with, that's well-bred, with great prey drive, um, that has very primitive instincts on, and bred to do the job that they were bred to do, then what will happen is they're not going to be an easy dog to show or an easy dog to train. And here you've been doing the head straight for a year, and it's still not perfectly there yet. Yeah. So on week one, you would do every single day, seven days a week, you would do entering the ring, which, as we've just seen, seems like a simple yes, good. thing, but it wasn't. You know, there was a lot to that. So that gives you a whole week to get that perfect. While you're doing that, three times a day, five minutes at a time, you would also do the head straight okay. on week one. The only thing that's going to be consistent on week two, three, four, five is head straight is on every single one of those weeks. Okay. Now, on week two, when you're actually working on the exam, then you're going to be able to do that more than three times because that's going to be part of the training for that week. So now we're going to focus on foot placement, body position, head position, and presenting the dog so the judge can see all the parts that they need to, to see there. Okay, go ahead and get him straight. And we'll start off with the head straight in the first position. And then I'm going to teach you a couple other positions. Okay. Now, a couple of things about his feet. He wants to do this thing. So when you set that foot right there, mm -hmm. you want to put his muzzle in towards the ring. Now, push that leg back like I showed you before. This one? Yep. And then let it drop down. Okay, do that again. Kind of steer that, see those toes? Try to point those in a little bit more. Okay. 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 Now you're going to set the other foot, and this time you're going to point that nose this way. Hey, hey. A little more, a little more, because he's still pointing it out. Pull that nose back even for, there you go. Perfect. Good. Okay, now you put it straight. So what will happen when he doesn't fight you, then those toes will go straight because the toes will follow the nose when you do that. Okay. Now, this is the first position of the head straight. The second position of the head straight, the only change here is now that you're going to do this, where you're going to hold your thumb and forefinger where this is okay. next to the side of the face, and you're just going to bump that and say head straight, head straight. Okay. okay, so put your thumb and forefinger on there, and he's not ready for this, but I want you to learn that. Right. And you're going to say head straight. Head straight. So it's just at ah, yep. straight. Yep, perfect. That's so it's good. Not as, it's just yeah, it's, less. so it's a little bit less okay. right there. Now you get lighter and lighter and lighter with that. Now one of the things that will help in the future for you is that when you do the second position of head straight, you can be out here and you can go head straight, head straight, and it's going to pop him on the side of the jaw mm -hmm. just like that position right there. So that'll help you out with the head straight when you're six feet away from him. Awesome. Now the third position of head straight is going to be just like the first position. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and do the first position of head straight. Okay. And the only difference now is this is going to help you control the head a little bit more where you're going to actually, yes, you're going to oh. use this hand. Okay and this one, you're just going to make sure that the throat is free and clear mm -hmm. and then all the pressure is like back here okay. and don't squeeze there. Remember that should come out here towards the end. Okay. okay. So now you can make a correction and that puts pressure there. So it's a kind of a combination of what you see other people do uh -huh. and, the, ooh, and the head straight. So that gives you a little more control. And if he gets really bad, then you let that hand go mm -hmm. and you do go back to position one. Okay. So I want you to practice all three of those positions and foot placement uh -huh. and body placement during week two yeah. of the, oh, of the okay. five week challenge. Okay. Okay. Now go ahead and walk him into a stack. Oh, release. Good job. Hey, hey, hey. We're That is one headstrong dog. <laughs> Good 
Boy. Very. Yeah, he does everything good on his own. He just, <laughs> which tells me that he just, you, he, you haven't 100% got to the point where he respects you enough for you to move things around. Yeah. So getting you're better, but yeah. yeah, getting better. Like 80%. Right. Before. Yeah. I would go with that too. It would be like me. If you didn't respect me, I'm saying, okay, you're going to do this. And it's like, no, 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 don't touch me. I'll do it on my own. And that's kind of like what he's doing right there. Okay. So you really, really need to do a lot of work with that head straight still with this dog, even though you've done it for a year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Now, so his front feet, nice and straight, mm -hmm. the outside of his okay. front foot, okay. Good. should match to the inside of his rear foot. Okay. And then good turn of stifle, and then the hock joints straight up and down. Now, one of the things on that turn of stifle okay. is that a lot of times okay. when you're setting those rear feet, if you set them on your own, see how they want to kick that leg out? Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to break the stifle and then set it. And then that way you get turn of stifle there. So you bring that forward and then set that foot. So now you got good turn of stifle, hock straight up and down. If you just simply go like that, you have no turn of stifle. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and try that. Very nice. That's gorgeous. Praise the heck out of him. That looks beautiful. See, that's all the difference in the world right there. Because most, and the worst thing you can do that I see a lot of is a lot of times people come in from between the legs, lift up the rear and set it down. Yeah. Yeah. And when they lift up the rear and set it down, they shoot both legs straight out. Yeah. Okay. A lot in this breed, especially. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of flat. Right. Right. So. So that's good. Okay, anything else on stacking or presenting? Um, no, because I think I have to do the more head straight. More head straight. To really Get it perfect. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the other thing, too, that I'm glad that you realize that, is that people want to work on this, people want to work on that, but it all stems from you having that head straight. Until you have that head straight perfect, then you're not going to have this dog looking perfect. Yeah. So no matter how many hours you put in practicing, you're just basically going through the motions until he totally respects you 100%. Yeah. Okay, so two fingers next to the ring and then your pinky there. Okay, now close those three. You have your thumb on the side of the muzzle where you're at and your chain is just hanging so you're not holding on to that. Now make a correction where you say head straight and you pull head the chain straight. forward. Good, and that's putting pressure on the back of the head. Straight. So your thumb and forefinger are on the ring, and you're gently just tapping on the side of the jaw, head and you're straight. saying head straight. head straight. So you're just going head straight, head straight. Head you're straight. tapping right here. Head straight. Good. Now do the advanced position. Okay, so it's the normal one, like beginning. Okay. And then you're going to come in with a collar, like a conventional hip presentation. Hey. But the difference is that when you do it this way, there's no pressure on the throat. The throat is free and clear. Where you do it the other way, you're just pulling up and it's putting pressure on that throat right there. Okay, that was good. Awesome. Really good. 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 He is such good. a good dog to, to practice this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of people would have given up. Excellent. Okay. Wow, it's doing better for you.
Good boy. Let's go. All done. Good boy. Very good. Come on. Good job. Let's go. I think even if there's little improvement, as long as there's improvement, that's good. And he's he's doing a lot of improvement over last week, but you know that that's a huge one right there. How's that? Good boy, right? Oh, nice. Good job. Very good. Good boy. So what do you what are you noticing the difference in ponder after doing this over a period of weeks or months? I notice that he focuses more on me when we do it. He has gotten a lot more self confidence with it as well, um, because a lot of the pads and stuff are wobbly, so that helps build them up in confidence, I believe. Um, what kind of problems did you have with him in the ring prior to this? Um, prior to this, uh, we couldn't, uh, had a really hard time keeping control of him, him darting out, him just being crazy. Give me some examples. Um, first time I showed him, um, I took him in and he kind of lost his mind, kind of had a little crazy attack. He got really unsure of everything, and he was leaning on me, and he was just melting when the judge would go over him, and it was just not pretty at that time. And I've noticed since then he can stand like a statue when I do the head straight. He's really, it's hard to explain. Now, do you, Thinking back on that, do you think he was really afraid and melting down, or do you think he was manipulating you? I think he was manipulating me 100%. Yep. So he's extremely smart, and he figures if he throws all the kitchen sink at you, he'll get you to stop, and you get out of that ring. Like, that right there was a, a, a little test. He's like, you're not paying attention to me. I want to do this, and I'm going to make you do that. And he's doing all this cutesy stuff to try to get you to engage. And the problem with most people is when their dogs do this cutesy stuff, they do engage, and the dog is the one that made that happen instead of the person making that happen. And with the fit pause training, with you doing the head straight, the combination of all those things together is making him aware that you're the one that's in charge. And, you know, you get so many people to talk about, oh, the, you know, the, the whole thing about being the alpha and stuff like that. It has nothing really to do with being an alpha. It has to do with being in charge, be, being the leader, being the one that they can respect and trust. And then when you go back into the ring after you've established all this and you earn that respect and trust, what are you seeing now are the results from it? Uh, I've noticed he has a lot more confidence in me. He's relying on me more in the ring. He's not uh, melting when I go to touch him. He's letting me pick up his feet when I do the head straight. Um, he's more in tune with me, I've noticed. And what about with judges? Him. He's done a lot better with the judges as well. Um, Again, when I do the head straight with him and get him into a certain mindset of I'm in control, he kind of lets everything go and the judges can go over him smoothly and, and he's controlled. Had you not done the head straight, had you not done this fit pause training or anything to try to earn that respect and trust, tell me where you feel things would be right now. I wouldn't be able to show him. I would not be able to take him into a ring. Judges would not be able to go over him. He, ah, he would still be melting. He would still be darting out. He would just, he'd be a train wreck. Now, again, 
what we need to understand is that's because of his intelligence. That's because of his instincts, his primitive instincts. That, uh, like, even right now, I mean, here's a dog that is trained. You know, I don't believe a, a dog like this is, oh, look at that, stepping on your feet. I mean, this dog is just so, so, so strong-headed that even though you're going to put thousands of hours in and training this dog, he's still going to try to push those buttons. He's still going to try to be the one that's in charge and he's going to test you constantly for that. And sometimes they're going to be subtle, sometimes they'll be obvious. But if you don't catch those things, what happens? Uh, he gets back into control and he loses it again. Yep. See, and I don't really want to use the term that he loses it, loses it because he, he really regains control of the situation. So, you know, he's not necessarily losing it. He's doing that on purpose to be in charge of that situation. And it works because who's the one who truly loses it when he does that? Exactly. Yeah. Once you've lost that situation, it's hard to regain that. So it's countless hours of practice and practice and practice that's going to get you to the point where you can handle those situations. Because as you can see right here, he's trying to manipulate you now. Go ahead and do the head straight again. See, he's got super strong drive. He wants to work. Head straight. Beautiful praising. <laughs> see, now here you did a head straight. He wanted to work so bad. He's stepping on your foot. He's jumping on you. And you did something where you were in total control because you were in control of that head. But he wants to work so bad that he loved that. And he worked very well for you. Big job. Okay, go ahead and praise the heck out of him. Uh Oh, I 